Get the ball. Drop. There you go. There you go. Yes. Drop. Drop. All right, hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training up here in Boston. Um, today, we're gonna do a video about board and train programs, Argos board and train programs, about our 30 day board and train, and about this, this dog here named Sarabi and her experience through board and train, the things that she came in with, the problems she had, how I addressed those problems, what our goals were, what the client can expect when the dog goes back home, and the support that we provide for our clients after a board and train program. So it's gonna be a long day, it's gonna be a nice little video. For this video, we're gonna take a walk in the, around the streets of Boston um, near my neighborhood, and then we're gonna to go to the park and do some things there. So um, before we go, there was a Ask Argos questions from XJ, and the question was, do I train wolves? I live in Boston. I don't see any wolves around here. Um, no, I don't train wolves. Uh, although wolves are able to be trained, just like cats are able to be trained. Um, I just don't do it, it's not my thing. There are wolf trainers, there are organizations that um, have habitats for wolves and they have trainers there who teach them so they could give them shots and things like that. Uh, but I don't do it. If you have a wolf and you wanna bring them to me, don't bring them to me. I don't wanna train wolves. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. <laughs> Sarabi. So I got Frank, Frank is on the camera. Um, I don't think Sarabi's ever gone for a walk with Frank, so it might be a little different for her here. You could also see I have a 10 foot line. That's because Sarabi, I'm training her to communicate off the leash. Um, but this 10 foot line means I don't have to hold it that much. <laughs> That's how you take your head off. Also, Sarabi's wearing an electronic training collar. Um, so you will be seeing, I'll be using that as we go. Um, you shouldn't be able to tell when I use it, all right? Okay, let's go. Uh, I want you guys to check out the video I made about electronic training collars, the one about Petco. I think it's called Stop the Shot Campaign or something like that. Um, that will explain a little bit more about what you're seeing here and how we use them. Hey, sweetie, let's go. All right, so we're gonna start our walk. We're just gonna walk down the street a bit. Good girl. I like to engage the dog. Um, so if you've watched uh, my first videos, I made some basically daily log videos about Sarabi um, that you guys could still check out there. I left them open to the public, which is something I normally don't do. Um, so you guys could definitely still check those out. But if you watch those videos, you could see her transition from day one to day 29. Today's day 29, tomorrow she goes home. Um, you can see her transition. On day one, she was chasing cars. She was pulling on the leash. She was doing all those kind of things. Good girl. That we don't want her to do. Hey, go ahead. Okay, guys. You ready? Okay, guys. Hey, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training. I have Sarabi with me. Sarabi is here for a board and train. Hey, she's never met Frank before. Um, she's here for a 30 day board and train. So we're going to be doing check in videos on her. This is day four of the board and train, and this is her behavior um, with, with Frank being here. She's not normally quite like this. This is how she's behaving right now, chewing the stick because she's nervous and anxious, um, and barking, of course, at Frank and pulling on the leash and all those things. So that's what she's here to fix. You know, those are the things that we're here to work on. Good. Hey. Good. All right, so she is now about to enter. Thursday will be her third week. Today is Sunday, so she's about to enter her third week of training. Good. She's changed a lot. She's come a long way. She's been with me for a little bit, so we're working on our communication and getting teaching her how to settle down and how to basically be a calm dog, right? Of course, there are children and stuff running around. Hey, you paying attention? Good. There you go. So she walks nicely on the leash now. We're about to start to do our off-leash training. That's gonna be next. Good girl, down. 
That's so wrong. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, down. So she's still learning, still a normal dog, doing her thing. Um, yeah, that's the whole story. I'm gonna let her sniff here. She just came out of my yard. Um, we were playing fetch, so Frank could collect some B-roll. Um, so, so that's why she's a little, she has a little bit of a pant going on. Okay, sweetie, let's go. Hey, let's go. So there's a couple things I do. Um, there's a couple training techniques I use in order to communicate and get the dog understanding. Um, there's some games I, we play and things like that. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail in that right now, but if you watch those videos, the training log videos, it will basically explain everything I did with her. Um, and you'll be able to see it happening in real time. I wish I could take a, a recording now of Frank as he's uh, recording this young lady, Sarabi, um, because she's never been through anything like this before. This is brand new. And when I met her, she, this would send her over the edge. There's no way you could do that. Yes, good girl. So I'm just rewarding whenever she looks up at me. Actually, we should go, maybe we should go that way. Jaywalking. So this is November in Boston. I'm wearing shorts, I'm not supposed to be. It's a very warm day. And for black dogs, heat, you know, they're very sensitive. They're much more sensitive to heat than other dogs with different fur colors. Good job. This way. Good. Let's go. All right, as you can see, she's able to pass all these people without it being a problem for her and able to continue to walk mostly without tension being on my leash. Um, that is the things that we've worked on. Oh, there's a lot of food over here, restaurants and things. So we'll see how she does here. Let this guy by. This way. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, she got startled because somebody was coming out of the door. Those things happen. And for her, she was a very highly anxious dog when I met her. Good job, sweetie. Okay, we're ready to go. You ready? Let's go, sweets. Let's go. So it looks pretty boring because this is where we're at, where there's not much going on. But in order to get here from where she was, it took quite a lot of work over our 30 day boarding train. One of the things, the reasons why I do boarding trains, especially with dogs like Sarabi, is because it gives the opportunity for me to have the biggest impact on their everyday schedule and the structure of their lives. That structure will calm the dog more than almost as much as anything else we do. Um, it's about structure, stress reduction, and communication. So while I do teach obedience commands, things like heel, sit, down, come, place, that is not the main focus of our training. Um, obedience is good for communication, but it doesn't develop a dog that's gonna be good at liberty. Hey, sweetie, here I am, here I am. Hey, let's go, let's go. Good, good job. But it does give us the ability to communicate things like that, like you're too far forward. Good girl. The reason why she was launching herself after cars is because the cars going by stimulated her to a point where she didn't know what else to do except for try to attack and bring down the car, basically. Let's go. So urban agility is a real thing and it's a way that I help dogs to build up their confidence with young dogs, the right kind of dogs. I'm gonna have her jump on this wall just to hang out up there. Also, um, you know, to help her to build up that confidence, if she will do it. You'll see that I position myself in a way that I'm able to catch her in case she fails. You ready? You ready? You ready? Up! Good girl. She was not about to fail that. I wanna make sure when she does things like that, 
and she gets lots of love for that. Good job. All right, so let's talk about, what was it, boarding trains and what you can expect from them. Um, so there's a lot of companies out there who offer board and train programs. As I said before, one of these days, I'm gonna make a video about how to select a good trainer. But you, when you speak to anybody who says that they will give board and train your dog, you wanna be listening for certain things. If they say that you give me your dog for two weeks or a month or six weeks, and you'll never have a problem with your dog again, that person is probably not telling you the truth. You know, because two weeks, six weeks, um, a month, whatever the case may be, is such a short time in the lifespan of a dog. And anything I do with a dog in two weeks can be undone in two weeks. The biggest part of the board and train program is that it helps us to create structure for the dog and to start to teach the language, you know, to the dog so that way they can communicate with their owners. What I tell my owners is that when your dog comes for a board and train, I create structure, I reduce stress, I start to get communication going, but I do not train your dog. Um, I communicate with your dog and then I teach him a language that I teach you later on through our private lessons. And then you train your dog, you know, cause you're the one who's at home with the dog. I'm not in your house when the dog's trying to jump on the counter. I'm not in the house when you have your guests coming over. You know, that's when the training of the dog, how to behave in these situations occurs. Um, so, I support through that, but I do not, I am not the one who's actually training the dog. That's something that's very important. And if you're working with a board and train where they feel like they're gonna have effects on those kind of situations when they're not there, you have to really question that. All right, so I hope that, under, that explains what I try to do in my board and train programs. Um, it's fun, it gets me allowed, it allows me to play with the dogs and have fun with the dogs um, and to really see them develop. You know, but um, but I'm not saying that this dog will never have a problem again. That really is determined by my ability to teach their owner and their owner's natural ability to train dogs as well, right? So that's how that goes. Ready? Off. Hey, off. Good shot. Oh, that was a heavy drop. Excellent. All right, we're good to go. The first day, the first dog that we saw, we were the distance from about here to that yellow car from the dog. Sarabi, so hey sweetie. Sarabi, so all of her hair from here to the back of her tail was standing up on end. Um, that's called the heckles of the dog. She was also up on her back two legs with her paws up in the air. Um, that was our first time that we ever seen a dog. We saw dogs two other times after that that day and each time she got really anxious. You know, now when we see dogs, and I don't know if we'll see, if we'll come across any, I kinda hope we do, but I don't know if we will. Now when we see dogs, she's much different. She's a lot more calm, a lot more relaxed, you know? And I think it is, part of it is the structure of what we do, which is um, she knows when she's on the leash, she's not gonna meet any dogs with me. They're not gonna come close enough to contact her. And I think that actually does help her to relax. All right, Sarabi, let's go. Excellent, good girl. So we're at the park right near my house and we're about to go into that park. Um, we're gonna do a little obedience in there and fool around a little bit, play around, give her some leisure um, and talk a little bit more about what clients can expect from my board and train program um, and what makes it a little different, um, I think, than most programs out there. So here we go, we're crossing the street. Okay, let's go. So we're out at the park, leash is down. I like to have a long leash on the dog, although I know this dog is gonna stick with me and follow um, with me. Good. This is as good a time as any to work on our warm up, real quick. Good. Good. Hey, this way, this way, this way. There you go, there you go. So I did not give her one command here. This is all just a, a warm up to get her focused. Excellent, okay. And she's free, right? What she does not know is that in my pocket, I have this and I have this. 
She doesn't know that. So Robbie, look what I got. Now she knows. Ready? You want to get this? There she goes. And this is what most people want with their dogs anyway. You know, it's just the ability to be around them. That they're not going to run off and go chase a car. Or if somebody comes with a the dog, they're going to have good control, you know, and be able to communicate to their dog what they want. It's a foundation. After that, if they want to continue, sweeties, right here. Good. Drop. Good. If they want to continue and work on training their dog, there are things that we can do. Drop. The thing about her is that um, her rule, whenever I throw the ball for her, she must hear me say drop. She must have the ball in her mouth and then she must hear me say drop before I will throw it. She likes to drop it early. See, get the ball. Get the ball. Get the ball. Drop. Let's go. Drop. See, I know how to um, have her drop it in a way that will continue to roll to me. Drop. It's pretty cool. You wish you were a dog trainer. Ah, get the ball. Get the ball. It's right there. You didn't hear me say it. Drop. <laughs> yep. So that's what that is. It's a lot of fun. And she finally finds, I threw that one far. Wow, my arm is getting good. <laughs> Pretty nice. Good girl. Very good. Excellent dog. Sarabi, down. No, down. Good. All right. Okay, in closing, wrapping it all up and bringing it all together. Um, Sarabi did pretty, really well over her 30-day uh, board and train program. I'm very happy with her. Um, our program is a little different than most programs in that we have a lot of private sessions at the end of this program and group classes in order to make sure that the owner has the ability to practice with the professional's guidance. Um, the board and trains are not for every dog. Uh, there are some dogs who I would not do a board and train with, and I want you to think about that too. If you're searching for board and train programs, there's a possibility that maybe there's another way to do it that might be a bit more beneficial. I tell many of my clients, there are people over there, I tell many of my clients that um, you lose something when you let somebody else struggle through the difficult points, you know, and get through those things for you. Um, you lose that experience of actually being there and feeling that uncertainty and then communicating and being successful. Um, so it's not for every dog, not for every person, but if you are a person who needs a board and train, make sure you select the right trainer with a long history of doing good work in that area. Talk to their previous clients if you can. Look at the reviews that are out there if you can. And, um, and look at how long they've been training. You know, um, that's a big deal as well. Um, as far as things going forward for Sarabi, keep your eyes open. Definitely check out the videos that we have up there. Also keep your eyes open to see her in our group classes and our advanced obedience classes and private lessons. I'm going to continue to um, film her whenever she's around and try to show, you know, what she's up to. All right. If you like what you see here today, or if you'd like to learn more about Argos dog training, definitely click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get your notifications. Um, check out our website, argostraining.com. Check the descriptions below for other links to our other social media accounts where you can learn more about us and what we're doing. Uh, if you like what you see here, we could definitely work with you to help you to develop that same kind of thing with your dog. Until the next time that I see you, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Yay, Sarabi, you're going home tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys, take it easy. Okay, sweetie, let's go. So you're gonna have to walk over here with me because I'm walking home. <laughs> yeah, so the thing about what I was just saying in there about the struggle, if you're not a dog trainer or, or to do your dog, your, train your dog yourself rather than giving it 
to a dog trainer to train through a board and train is that the struggle is real. And through that struggle, we learn, you know, about ourselves, we learn about the dog. We learn about how those emotions feel when, when we are not successful. You know, we also learn that when we're not successful, most of the time, we're gonna be able to keep the dog safe. Especially if you follow the advice from your professional dog trainer. Even if my, my clients in my group class, if, even if their dogs blow up at each other and all the dogs in the group blow up, none of those dogs will get hurt. You know, and, and then the clients in that room or in that space get to go through that feeling as to what this is, how they feel when their dog is behaving like a dog, you know? Um, so you can't underestimate the value of that. You can't underestimate the value of actually being in the kitchen when the cooking is happening. Um, so I encourage you all, some of you, board and train is really important. Um, and you need to do it with a board and train. There are some dogs who I will not train unless it's a board and train. Those dogs exist. But um, for the majority of dogs, the majority of clients, it's better if they struggle. It's better if you struggle, <laughs> you know? And I say that with love. All right, guys, I'm home. I'm done. It's time for another class. See you later. <laughs>